back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Um, we've got Terry running the show tonight, and uh, we're just practicing some new stuff. We've got some things to tell you about some things that are coming up. And I'm going to start by turning on Arno. Arno, can you Hello, tell everybody. us about, about what we're doing with you? Yes. Um, so again, we're um, we're having the uh, the next project on, and and that's the uh, the nebula. Um, and if you all go to, uh, let me see if this um, works to where we can show um, the. Um, when you go to the Take, take Shot website, you can see the, and uh, submit your uh, nebula images, and they will be available uh, for a, a show somewhere in November. So we're looking forward to see those submissions, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll put them together in a nice show like we did with the, um, the Gorgeous Galaxy. So looking forward to uh, receive them. Back to you, Alex. Okay, thank you. Um, We've got some other things coming up. There's, a, I think I'm going to have to take you over to the website so I can show you a few things. Um, share. And uh, come on, little machine. It's tired because it's been processing all day. Um, let me go back to, uh, there we go. Uh, I'd like to tell you about the calendar. You remember well, a couple of weeks ago, I was all antsy pantsy because we were only down to like five or three or something like that weeks ahead in presentations. We've now magically somehow gotten up to all the way to November 14th. We are taking Halloween off. And so that's an important thing so that you can distribute candy to everybody. And um, but we've got a lot of good programs coming up and I hope you uh, continue to volunteer uh, to present some of those. We've got about three volunteers off of our contact screen. People just pushed that button, gave us their name, uh, t told us their email and what they wanted to talk about. And they said, I can do a show about this or that or the other thing. And uh, we talked to them a little bit and we find out that, yeah, they really can probably do it. Um, and remember, all you're doing is sharing with your Astro Buddies. So it's uh, there shouldn't be a lot of pressure. Um, we also got a very interesting comment from um, from the last show, complimenting um, Eric and Tim on the show they put on as far as um, uh, their their uh, tone mapping in the one case and the the overall pix inside processing that Tim did. And this guy, the, the commenter, reminded us that we haven't done many of those shows lately. We need some more people like you out there that uh, have done some processing to just sit with us and show us how you process some stuff. Uh, we don't want to get away from that. That's part of the roots of what the, the Astro Imaging Channel should do. Um, I believe we um, we haven't done this for a while either. Uh, no, this is this we have done. Um, Arno just told you about that. Um, you can go over here to uh, TAIC Shots and you can submit your files. Also, if you didn't get a chance to see Gorgeous Galaxies, uh, there's a link to it down here. And of course, a place to volunteer. Arno told you about that. This is the one I want, meant to go to, uh, the TAIC workshops. The workshops are part of our effort to get you to download a set of data and process it. Uh, Eric has been very kind to loan us some M33 data. So if you click this link to data files down here, uh, you will find uh, there are five files here uh, for you to download, process them up, and um, then when you get that finished, you click here to submit the file, and you send us your file. Make sure that it's at least 1080 pixels on one side so that we, you know, we, it's big enough and we don't have to shrink it. Or we don't have to um, pixelate it by making it go too big or anything else like that. Deadline for this is October 17th and the deadline for um, the tech shots, the next gorgeous galaxies. Only this one's gonna be about the beauty of dust, nebulae, the beauty of dust. Um, that's gonna be October 31st, two weeks later. Okay, so you got plenty of time to get on on both, but we'd like to see you get moving on it so that we've got something to show you in the ensuing weeks, okay? Now, where are we tonight? tonight we are in the chat room over here where everybody can put uh, questions in. Hey, here's somebody from Columbus, Ohio. I was there a month ago. Uh, I had a wonderful time with my dear, sweet grand, 
my mother-in-law breaking her hip. Um, anyway, it was fun. But what you came to hear was Rory telling us all about uh, Next Dome. And so Rory, if you are ready, you can take over and you can start sharing. You guys hear me okay? We can hear you fine. You guys can see that okay? Mm-hmm. All right. You're doing so, good. All right. Thank you. All right, you guys. Hello. My name is Rory Clark, and I'll be presenting my experience with the next film tonight. I uh, just wanted to say before I start that uh, I'm really – grateful for the opportunity to be on the Astro Imaging channel. I've been a fan of the show for quite a number number of years now, and um, I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to share what I know with you guys. Uh, the presentation plan for tonight will be me briefly talking about why I chose the next dome, and a lot of this will be uh, personal reasons why I chose it. It uh, may not necessarily be why you would choose the really next dome, grateful for the opportunity uh, to be but a lot of things will apply to you as well. I've been a fan of the show. For um, quite also, a I am uh, now, in no and, way affiliated um, with Next really Dome, so the, uh, hopefully this is just a, uh, it's like an unbiased uh, opinion. I, I couldn't find too much information tonight. tonight. And so um, I want to share what I, I know with you guys. Why I chose the next I'll dome. go over some planning and setup. Again, this section will be... Probably more specific to you would choose the next uh, me dome, and uh, may not but a lot be of things your uh, you as well. case, uh, uh, as I said, uh, my also, uh, I am dome at, the, no at a club, with um, really um, so, but I'll briefly go over how you can plan uh, to set it up like in, in your backyard I, I can, if you're looking to do that. The main reason I wanted to talk tonight is some of the complications I faced while building the dome, and so if I can save you guys the headache of kind of navigating through this yourself. Uh, and, uh, that's kind of my objective for the night. I don't plan on taking too much of your time. Uh, I think this presentation will last about a half hour or so, and hopefully we have some questions at the end. I'll briefly go over the operation. Um, I use uh, so the, the software I use to uh, set up the uh, dome with uh, the uh, mount, so it's all synced together. I'll go over some things I keep inside the interior, some tools and whatnot, and like I said, if you guys have questions uh, during or after the presentation just let me know um, before i begin i'll just uh, quickly introduce myself um, like good tip rory rory yeah. before you do that it sounds like we're getting an echo over in youtube someplace which might well mean that one of us in the room have our microphone on at the same time when we're all broadcasting so well you're doing fine um but the, the rest of us should check that out, okay? Yeah. And continue. Uh, Thank you. Just, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, so I live in Good Horse County, Rory, California. Rory, before you do that, it sounds like life. we're getting an echo I over in YouTube someplace, seven years which ago. might well mean that one of us in the room have our microphone on at the same time when we're all broadcasting. So you're doing fine. I absolutely um, but still love the rest of us visual astronomy. Okay. Um, yeah, and as continue. Well as Thank you. Imaging. Yeah, uh, my um, first imaging um, rig was a so William Optics 7 uh, 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 It sounds like we're getting an echo over God, that was the last year they had that box one. And this is one of the pad I was shooting on at my club before I built the next dome on the different pad on the left side. I absolutely As you can see, it's kind of a... Okay. It's like an outdoor office. Yeah, you got to kind of all this stuff yeah, out there. Uh, time you want to set up, well, as I'm sure many of you are really familiar with. Shortly after uh, that, uh, uh, shortly uh, after getting into astronomy, I joined the Riverside Astronomical Society, and I'm also a member of Orange County Astronomers well. Okay. Rory, hold on for a minute. Yeah. We're getting that echo feedback. Terry, do you have any other sources in there? Are you running? Not too sources. Not that I'm aware of here. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I'm not hearing an echo in. Yes, we are not hearing the echo in the room. Okay. That's why I'm okay. testing it out there. Well, you folks will have to yeah. tell us. Are you still hearing the echo?
Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Eric, what's happening on the echo? Okay, seems to have stopped. Silence is golden. Rory, say something. How, do, how does this sound? You hear any echo? Rory? You guys hear any echo? Rory, can you say something? Yeah, you guys hearing me okay? I hear you, yeah. You sound fine. The echo okay out there, folks out in the out in YouTube land. Um, I'll double check. I'm on watching. I'm Rory, watching. Rory, could you start your presentation from the get go? You want me to start it all over? Please. Yes, please start it over. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is the sound uh, Rory? Go ahead and start over. You know, count to ten. Okay. George says it's good now, and that's what we were waiting for. Is George saying it was good? Martin says it's good. Rory. Yeah, can well, you hear me? Practice you just had. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. In the room, good. Steve. Everybody says it's okay now. So get going. <laughs> okay. Going. All right. All right. From the get go. Uh, all right. So welcome, welcome back, or or welcome again. Um, uh, again, my name is Rory Clark, and I'll be going over my experience with the Next Dome tonight. Um, as I said uh, the first time around, uh, thank you for having me on this program. I've been a, a fan of the Astro Imaging cha channel for quite a number of years now, and uh, great, very grateful to be um, uh, with you guys tonight sharing what I know about the Next Dome. Um, also want to say there's been quite a few episodes I've really enjoyed lately. Um, the Galaxy uh, presentation last week was really awesome, really enjoyed that. And Molly, that trip to Chile is my dream. That looked amazing. So um, awesome to be here tonight sharing with you guys. The presentation plan for tonight, um, I'll briefly talk about why I chose the Next Dome. Uh, I'll uh, be specifically talking about why I chose the Next Dome, and it may not be why you should choose the Next Dome, but a lot of what I talk about will be applicable to your situation as well. Uh, I'll uh, again, briefly go over planning and setup. The main reason I wanted to share tonight was some of the complications I faced while putting this dome together. A lot of the um, uh, procedures for uh, installation are not in the manual, and I kind of had to figure this this uh, stuff out on my own, as did a lot of people um, from what I understand reading the forums and whatnot. So hopefully we could save you a headache um, if you're watching this before you build the dome. And uh, if you're planning on getting a dome, hopefully you could uh, kind of anticipate what you're in for before you, you uh, decide to purchase one. But uh, overall, I think it's a fantastic uh, dome so far. Um, I'll go over operation, um, just the software I use to uh, uh, rotate the dome or sink it to the mount, and then um, some tools and whatnot I keep in the interior. If you guys have any questions before or after the presentation, just let me know. I also uh, want to say I am in no way affiliated with Next Dome, um, so hopefully this is an unbiased opinion. Um, I am in no means an expert at the Dome either. I still have a, a lot to learn. So if you guys have any questions, um, uh, maybe anticipate uh, some I don't knows uh, because I, I definitely don't know everything. I'm still learning, but like I said, I couldn't find too much information um, going through this process myself. So I wanted to share what I do know with you guys. Uh, before I start, I'll just briefly introduce myself. Uh, like I said earlier, my name's Rory. I grew up in Orange County, California. Uh, I lived here my whole life. Got into astronomy about seven years ago where I got my first scope. It was a Orion 12 inch Dobsonian. As you can see, I've made some adjustment since then and i still love visual astronomy um absolutely love visual astronomy uh shortly after that got to imaging and got a william optic 71 and uh, astrophysics mach 1 and um most of this stuff is all recommendations from watching the astro imaging channel 
from the ground up, even the, the power supply and, and pretty much the, the whole, uh, the whole system and setup is, uh, your guys' advice. So, um, thank you to, uh, the past Astro, uh, imaging channel, um, presenters for helping me put that system together. Uh, sh shortly after I got into astronomy, I joined uh, Riverside Astronomical Society and uh, am a member of Orange County Astronomers as well. And then I uh, just recently started a blog, Cel Celestial Optics. I just kind of go over some troubleshooting and uh, whatnot on that, that blog. Nothing major, just kind of a fun thing. If you guys want to follow me on social, uh, Rory A. Clark, I'll follow you back. I love uh, interacting with uh, astro imagers. So specifically why I chose the next dome, um, one of the biggest reasons for me is living upstairs and having to haul down gear from my stairs every time I want to image. So this is just the base of my observing rig and you start bringing out observing material and equipment and I would be hauling you know, equipment up the stairs 20 times uh to the place and then coming back 20 times up the stairs so that gets old after a while uh another reason was financial reasons so the next dome's probably your best bet um i guess the sky shed would be another option but uh you know any better or more advanced dome is quite a bit of money so uh financial reasons were a huge uh determinant and why I wanted to get the next dome. Um, I don't care who you are or what your budget is. If astronomy is your hobby, you'll find some way to be broke. Uh, <laughs> so uh, try to save a buck or two where I can. Also, um, I had a chance to build a roll off roof at my club, uh, but uh, I could not, you can't take that with you when you go, right? So I wanted something that was portable, pack up in the truck, and if I ever wanted to move or anything, I could, uh, you know, kind of uh, package up that dome and, and fit it in a moving truck and, and uh, move that to a new place if, if, if I wanted to. In comparison to the sky shed, I wanted the ability to shoot at Zenith. And I know you can't do that with the sky shed. Uh, it lets you have the adapter and I can't fit that adapter on my um, pad at my club. So uh, uh, that definitely wasn't an option for me. Um, and yeah, I definitely want to be able to shoot at Zenith. But the main reason I picked the dome was the wind. It is so windy at my club. Um, it seems every night I go out there, I'm shooting about 30 minutes north of Joshua Tree. And uh, every night, I, uh, it seems I go out there, it, it starts picking up the wind. And, and um, you know, it gets up to usually about 15 mile an hour winds on a nightly basis. It does eventually calm down, but, uh, it, you know, it, around midnight is when the wind finally dies down. Now I could comfortably shoot at about 15 to 20 miles an hour wind with that dome and with a roll-off roof observatory once your scope uh clears that roof you're still subject to the wind so um that was a huge factor in, in wanting to image with a dome observatory briefly going over planning and setup a lot of this stuff will may not be applicable to you but just um uh, i will kind of brief over how you could plan if you're uh wanting to set this up in your backyard uh First, you're going to want to go over to the Next Dome website, go over to the resources um, icon here, press that. That'll take you to this page. You'll want to start at plans and drawings and uh, looking at your uh, base dimensions here. Click on that. That will bring you to this link here. And this will give you a, a kind of idea of uh, what your um, your pad dimensions need to be or, or however you're going to build the foundation. So any dome with more than one bay, and a bay is these extra little uh, storage spaces here, uh, you're going to need at least 125 inch diameter. I have three bays on mine, and so that's kind of what I'm familiar with. I'll talk about, um, and I highly recommend you buy as many bays as you can 
right off the start because to go back and insert bays after the fact is going to be a huge pain in the neck. Um, what I did is went over to Photoshop and I made uh, 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 like a 20 by 20 foot canvas in Photoshop. So we'll just say this this whole white area is this 20 by 20 foot canvas in Photoshop. And then I, I used the circle tool in Photoshop and I, I made a 125 inch diameter circle in Photoshop. And then I copied this next dome picture into Photoshop and I tra I used the transform tool to stretch it out to that 125 inch circle I made so I'm perfectly at scale. I overlaid a blue rectangle over the picture that was uh, 10 foot by 12 foot, just like my pad on my club. And I knew my dome would fit inside of that, that rectangle. Um, although it's pretty close, so you can see the corners here. Don't pay any attention to my horrible seal job on the bottom, but you could see the uh, the corners pretty close to the um, concrete um, on my my pad. Moving on from there, you'll go to your meter schematics, and this section here will have all the dimensions you need to plan um, uh, accordingly. You'll have your height, your width, your opening of your door, the shutter area here. You're going to want to pay attention to this uh, this drawing here. And I think they got this wrong. And um, I believe Tolga started a thread on Cloudy Nights about this as well. And I believe you only s offset your pier for a fork-mounted uh, uh, pier. If anyone wants to jump in on that, feel free. But they they got this right here in the fact that if you have a fork-mounted uh, telescope, you're going to want your RA and deck axis plumb with the dome, dome top center. But for a German equatorial mount, as they have pictured here, I was shooting with a Rasa 11, which was well in the confines of uh, the uh, recommended scope uh, measurements you, you are able to shoot with in the next dome. I would have hit the side. If I had offset my German equatorial mount to the specs, there's no way I could have shot with a Rasa 11. It would have hit this, this side right here. So do I would not recommend offsetting a German equatorial mount. Just put your RA and deck access, which is in the middle of your scope. So you're going to want the RA and deck access, which is right here, plumb with the dome top center. So you're going to want that access right here. It's kind of tricky to measure. I, to be honest, I just measured from the top of mine and I'm fine, but they do recommend measuring. It's uh, basically an imaginary spot in the middle of the uh, internal components of your, uh, your mount. Moving on from there, uh, uh, if you're looking to build a sample observatory, oh, if you're looking to build an observatory um, deck uh, in your backyard, They'll give you a sample design here and i'll just show you what that looks like here um this is only for a dome without a bay or i believe only one bay but if you have two or more bays you're gonna have to plan accordingly because these layouts do uh do not fit but this will show you how to put a pier in and uh, uh some basic measurements and, and kind of how you'd plan to put a deck in your uh your backyard so to say this is where I built my observatory at the club. Um, I was really fortunate. They had a very limited number of uh, pads available with uh, uh, resources to build an uh, observatory on. So I was on a waiting list for quite a while. And then I seized the opportunity for that. I got super lucky for that. So for building a dome, it was just a 43 inches. Had a friend hold a, a bolt in the middle, tied a string around a pencil, drew a circle around it, and uh, laid my uh, dome around that circle. Moving on to a pier height calculation for those who want to put a pier in your, your dome. Pretty straightforward um, uh, planning uh, for that. Your pier height is just going to be the height of the middle of your scope in a horizontal position um, to the bottom of your pier plate. And you subtract that from 53 inches, which is the height of your dome wall. So uh, 
super easy equation. P equals A minus B. P is your pier height. A is the wall height of the next dome. And B is the distance from the OTA center to the mount base in horizontal position. If you're unable to see the horizon, uh, it's blocked by mountains or uh, buildings or trees or what have you. You could reduce the height um, if, you're, if you're not able to see the horizon. And by reducing the height, uh, you'll be able to put in a smaller, or sorry, if you reduce the height of your pier, you'll be able to put in a bigger telescope. Um, and I believe the maximum uh, refractor you can put in there is 152 millimeter with a pretty large imaging train on the back. And a 12 inch Newtonian would be the upper limits of what you want to shoot with um, at a standard pier height. Um, I ran across this pier. Actually, uh, it was this pier. I I had that um, uh, sold to me from a member at a at my uh, astronomy club, and it already had the bolt uh, layout on the bottom. So again, I got super lucky in that regards. Just a matter of running conduit um, through the the bottom there. Uh, actually, just running elect electrical wiring through that conduit and and hooking up that that pier and bolting it in. If you want to get a next dome pier. Those are available on the Nexome site, and they have the the base um, parameters for you to um, uh, plan accordingly for if that's something you're interested. Also, if you wanted to build a shed and just use the um, dome roof, you could buy this uh, this uh, like uh, uh, basically an adaptive uh, device, uh, and you could plan accordingly around this uh, circle and put just the dome on top of a shed or even a sky shed, I think can use this, uh, this dome, this uh, uh, adaption here. So after you thought about putting your dome together and, and plan that all out, uh, you could go to the uh, user manual here and that will <clears throat> tell you everything you need to know about putting your dome together. I'm not gonna go through this section, but what I will go through is the complications I faced while, um, going through the manual and putting the, the dome together. So first is the hardware. This is a super easy one quick, just a, I, I guess a quick heads up, is all the hardware you need is in the box. Well, I got three boxes, but it wasn't in the section like I thought it was gonna be in. For instance, I was putting up the, the dome and the dome comes in one box, the dome roof, right? But the hardware was in the, the box for the um, the the walls, the uh, the perimeter, the, the observatory perimeter, and a whole different package, and and so it was a little hard uh, kind of putting together all the hardware and everything. But it's all there. I assure you, you'll probably have a, a lot more hardware in the end. Um, that's uh, a common thread on the forums. Is there's a lot of extra hardware. One of the biggest issues I faced while putting this dome together. Together. And hopefully this will save anyone starting to put the dome together a, a big headache, is mounting the track. As you can see here, this, this is the track um, that goes around the perimeter. And when you first start to put it on, it appears as it's too long. And I actually cut this tooth off here thinking it was too long. It was like actually one tooth too long and there, there was no way I could fit this track in uh, around the perimeter. But whatever you do, do not do that. Don't modify the length of the track. It will fit, you kind of, you gotta force it in there. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. Before you even start though, do yourself a favor and buy some 3M 30 pound rated double-sided tape. The uh, the forums say to disregard the, the tape that comes with the dome right from the get-go. And of course, I didn't listen to their advice and I thought I could do it, you know, better. And trust me, just buy this tape and it'll save you from having to do it twice. Um, the other tape, the track fell off right away. It, it didn't hold. It fell off almost immediately. I've had no problems since I've used this tape. Um, so highly recommended. <clears throat> You're going to want to pick up some C clamps. Um, and so when you, the, the, um, 
right from the start, you're just going to C-clamp this track, run it around, and C-clamp the end. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, right now the best I can. So I kind of made up this little um, drawing here to show you guys what process I used to, to mount this track. Because like I said, it's too long. I, I had to figure this out on my own. I couldn't find any information out how to do this. So here's your parameter of the dome. Here's your dome rim. And here's the track, right? Here's the, the track and it's too long. You have some overlap here. Okay, so you're gonna put a C-clamp on the, the beginning and you're gonna run that track around and you're gonna C-clamp the end. Okay, but you're gonna have this overlap because it's too long. So there's no way for it to go. You have this, this loop, so to say. So what you do is you you just press that loop kind of to the left there and uh, press it again and just kind of jam it into place and and uh, that's uh, you know that's how I got it to work. Um, but it's I, it sounds easy, but it took me uh, you know a little while to figure that one out. I heard freezing the track may work well, so uh, that was a common theme on the forums as well. So hopefully that may help you out. Um, you may want to try that. Moving on to getting off track, this was a problem um, I faced in the beginning that I have since worked out, but uh, took kind of a, a lot of adjustments. First, you're going to want to ensure your dome, your sorry, ensure your dome is as round as possible right off the bat. So when you're drawing that circle, just uh, make sure you're kind of putting the dome around that circle as best as you can. So that's the first thing you want to you want to ensure. I've never had problems tracking. No issues while tracking so far, only slewing. So when the 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 dome roof is rotating uh, um, fast, like when my scope is slewing from one spot to another, that's when I get off a uh, track. Uh, so only slewing. When I'm tracking slow, I've never had a problem. And it's really easy to fix. So you just kind of, you have to go back and kind of realign it, but it's not too big of a deal. Silicone lubricant may help prevent unwanted wheel traction. Um, this is what I've, I've done on uh, my dome here. Um, I'll show you kind of what I mean. I put some silicone in, in this ridge here, right? And this ridge is what uh, these wheels, um, uh, it, the, the wheels kind of roll around on this ridge here. Uh, and you put the silicone in here and it, it prevents the sticky plastic wheels from gripping this dome ridge and riding up on, uh, riding up on this, this, this kind of pointed area here. It, if you put that silicone, it, it's really slippery and it's don't this, this, um, this area here just, it slips back into place and it prevents, uh, this dome from, uh, kind of gripping and getting off track. Um, hopefully, uh, that was a, uh, somewhat useful explanation. <laughs> Next mounting the motor, uh, the motor that came with my dome was not the motor that was in the instructions. So here's the, the new one on the left and the old one on the right. Um, the one on the right is in the instructions the last time I looked. A lot of stuff has changed on the next dome. And uh, I'll talk about one of those changes later. But um, there was no instructions for putting this motor on, at least when I uh, put mine on. So I actually took off a wheel here. So I had more space to uh, cinch this uh this gear against the teeth with this coupling nut here. I took this wheel off and I used a coupling nut that came with the hardware and I tightened that up against the track. And you can see this gear is hanging halfway off this track. And you can adjust the height of this gear with this uh, screw here, but it's still hanging off the track a little bit. It's a bad design in my opinion, and a lot of people have had this issue, but it is what it is, and uh, that's the only way I've, I've gotten it to, to work, so I don't know what else to do about that. Um, it seems to be a right. common thread. Yeah. yeah. I don't see any posted questions. I have a couple of questions. Um, sure. With all these issues, do you ever get any 
help from the company, call them up and they say, yeah. Hey, you know, what, what do I do here? Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, uh, actually texted Babak personally and he's gotten right uh, back to me, um, uh, r- right away. Actually, I would say within, uh, an hour or, or two. So, which is pretty quick. And, uh, so some of these things I've been kind of, um, been able to figure out in an hour or two or, or, um, I just, I don't know, for lack of, um, putting maybe this thing together at midnight or something, I'm, uh, wasn't able to, uh, reach him right away. I do work night shift, so I have kind of a nightlife, uh, so, um, don't have the, you know, the best hours for getting a hold of people, but I will say that the customer service is a hundred percent in my opinion for, for next to them. So, um, really appreciative about that. I've also had, uh, I have, well, another friend, um, at the club I image at with a next as well. And he's, um, uh, had, uh, a complication or two throughout the five years he's owned the dome and the box always uh, really helped him out with anything. So um, I uh, am totally satisfied with customer service so far. Now, do you access this remotely or are you on site? No, uh, I don't access it remotely and I wouldn't recommend this go or sorry. I wouldn't recommend this dome for any major, remote applications it's a good like backyard uh dome in my opinion you you know if you want to stay in your house and kind of do it remote that way i would recommend that but i it's not something i would put out like in new mexico or you know some some super remote uh location how long did it take you to get it up and running uh it I put the dome up in a, about a, I would say one day, and then um, the pier and everything uh, at about uh, a, a one day as well. Uh, okay, that's all for now. Uh, Rory, we'll uh, uh, with pier placement, um, you do have to have an offset on your pier because where the axes uh, come together on your mount, that should be the central part of your of your setup. And a, because, because of that, yeah, yeah, and because of that, you do have to shove it off either north or south, depending on the hemisphere that you're in. Okay, um, like I said, if I would have followed the offset um, recommendations, though, there's my there's no way I could have imaged with my scope. It would have it would have hit the side of the the uh, the dome for sure. Okay. Um, and, and Rory, because yeah. of the way your um, pier base was already there, you actually had to move the next dome, I suppose, in order to get that offset. That's right. When you set up your pier, you offset the building to the pier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it seems to be a... Uh, I guess a confusion on my part and a lot of other people's part as well. Um, I, I have, uh, I guess run across a lot of opinions regarding this issue. It's, it's very, I guess, uh, it's something I could, uh, definitely, um, gain more experience with or, or, uh, learn more about. But, um, like I said, I, I had, a. Uh, I think it was a 10 inch offset recommendation for this the scope I was imaging with. And uh, in, in my case, I don't know if I, I'm calculating it wrong or whatnot, but like I said, there was, there would be no way I could image with, um, you, you know, that scope, it hit the side of my dome a hundred percent. Is that all the questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So moving on, the next issue I had was mounting this magnet. And this magnet is what homes your mount, your, uh, your dome um, to your software. So your software knows where your, your dome is at. And this little magnet here uh, was not able to uh, come in contact with the, the magnet on the, the motor. So I found this little 
chunk of wood in the, in the, in a garage, right? And glued that to the magnet so I could close the gap here and it would um, contact um, or, you know, it would, it would register. Um, and this is another common uh, thread on, uh, on the forums that, that people have. Um, so a little adjustment there, um, you know, and hopefully that, that uh, saves uh, you a headache if you're, you know, doing this from scratch as, as well. Regarding installing the tables, these uh, are horribly designed, in my opinion. Um, they just wedge right up against each other right here. The hardware for these tables did not fit. And, and uh, again, this is a, a common issue. Um, a lot of people just do away with these tables. Um, so I had to go buy some new hardwares and basically just like jam these tables into each other and made them work. Um, it was super hard to set up uh, and just, I think this uh, design could use some improvement with the tables for sure. And when you're opening the door, uh, pretty cheaply designed door too. Um, I found this graphite works good to escort some of that in there. It uh, helps the um, the lock open a little easier. It's a little, it's a, it feels a little cheap. And then putting some lubricant behind the metal here um, helps open the door too, because it, it's uh, a little hard, even the handle, just moving the handle, turning the handle to open the door uh, without this lubricant is, is quite a task. Um, so, you know, that being, that, that being said, uh, another reason you're not going to want to put this out in a super remote location is, you know, not the securest dome in the world either. For the shutter, the shutter opening, there was this bad design. They since fixed it. I think I got the last one, but they had this, this basically this this plastic that ran along the inside and uh, this bottom piece of the shutter slid along this plastic. And I don't have the uh, automated shutter motor that comes with the dome. It's like a thousand dollars for that, that thing. I'm not really automated anyways. I, you know, as a, it was a pretty expensive upgrade for something I you don't necessarily feel I need, but uh, a lot of people had problems with that and they just scrapped this design and they came up with this new um, design that rolls uh, along the, some ball bearings. So I don't have any uh, experience with this design, but it looks a lot better than the uh, the old design they were using. As far as the dome operations, I'm going to brief over this section. Just uh, I wanted to um, go over this for anyone who is anticipating getting a dome to kind of know what their their um, getting into it and it's pretty easy i just wanted to give you a heads up of how um you'd set up the the dome to sync with your mount you'll need windows um, you can shoot with a uh apple i believe if you have software bisque they have a plug-in uh for the next dome i don't have any familiar uh i'm not familiar with that but uh that is an option for you uh, and then if you're gonna sync your mount you're going to need uh ASCOM as well you don't need it if you're not going to sync them but um i wouldn't recommend that going back to the resources page you'll just come over here to downloads and download this pdf here this will take you to the pdf where you'll scroll down three pages and come to these links here and click on um click on uh the download, uh, I just click on any one of those um, and this will download the Nextome Beaver program, which looks like this. So uh, syncing your mount or your telescope, you'll click uh, this telescope section here. You'll come up to tools. That'll get you to set up, click set up. You'll choose your uh, mount. In my case, is the astrophysics. I clicked OK. All my properties were already set up previously, so nothing to do, um, nothing more to do there. When you're setting, now going over to the dome, again, click Tools, go to Setup. 
and you'll get this page here. And before you choose the beaver setup, you're going to want to put in your offsets here. And I'll show you how to do those right now. For your east and west, north and south, pretty straightforward. Before you begin putting these measurements in here, you'll want to mark your, your dome. So use true north, don't use magnetic north, and put little square pieces of tape on north, south, east, and west. I put uh, these little red um, duct tapes on the top and bottom portion of the dome. So when the dome rotates, I could uh, align them up uh, accurately. From there, it's just a measure, matter of measuring. Here's from the north to the middle of my mount. And remember, technically, you're supposed to measure to the middle of the internal component of your dome. I just measure to the top and it's it's been fine. So you measure your north to the middle and you measure your south. And you're gonna subtract your north from your south and that'll give you your north-south offset. Same thing, east to west, measure east and your west and you're gonna subtract your east from your west and that'll give you your east-west east west offset. You're gonna plug those numbers into here. For your up and down offset, Pretty straightforward. Just measure the height above the floor to the middle of your, your scope in a horizontal position or the middle of your RA axis. And you're going to subtract the height of your dome rim, which they give you is 1350, 1350 from that number. So straightforward um, up and down offset measurement. If it's positive, it means you're above the rim. If it's negative, it means you're below. So if, if this number gets positive, that means your, your middle section is above the, the rim here. If it's negative, it means it's below. Next one is the dome radius. They give you that number as 1025. Just plug that number in. And then for your gym access, um, easy. Uh, you just measure from the middle of your uh OTA to the middle of the RA access here. And again, that's supposed to be the internal component. Plug that number in here and those will give you all your off offsets. Then you're gonna click choose, click next dome control system and then click properties. That'll bring you to the uh, Beaver control system here. Plug in your COM port. Um, we all know probably that at this point, <laughs> you, you know, you go to your device manager, you unplug and plug your USB in a couple times until you figure out what com number that is. And then you plug that number into here for your home azimuth and park azimuth. This is, this is how your, this is where your dome's going to know where it's at. <clears throat> so here's North. And the way I knew it was North is I just, put my shutter, I've marked it up here. I know you probably can't see that well, but that red tape is aligned with this tape here. And it's uh, somewhat in the middle. Um, it's somewhat in the middle of my shutter when my shutter's pointed at north. If your magnet is directly over the homing magnet, when your shutter is at north, you could put a zero offset but if it's not if it's misaligned let's say you want your shutter not north but you want to put your shutter to the west or or to the uh east then um you're going to make some adjustments here so again let me let me say that again i know that wasn't the, the best way to say that if you want your shutter to point towards the west or the east when your magnet is aligned, then you're going to need to make some adjustments. You're going to note the azimuth reading on the software when the shutter is at north. So when you move it around with the button on the motor, you'll see the measurements change in the software. Align it north to where you're, you're uh, aligned with this marking you made and write down that number. And then line up your magnet here write that number down and subtract this number from this number here. And you'll uh, put those measurements into the um, that uh, home and park azimuth I, I showed you earlier. 
uh, if it's negative, add it to 360. I know that's probably confusing for you guys, so sorry about that. Uh, maybe go back and watch that a, a couple times. <laughs> I apologize. Anyways, you get those numbers and you'll put that uh, into these uh, um, areas here. Once you're done with uh, all those measurements, you're ready to sync your scope. Uh, before you do, you'll go to home. You just press this here. Your dome will rotate clockwise and it'll home with the magnet. It'll know where it's at. Then you'll click slave to telescope and you'll be in, in uh, business. If you're off, here's a cheater's kind of uh, azimuth adjustment. You could use this um, to uh, kind of compensate a little bit if your your dome's not syncing properly with your scope. So this is an awesome uh, slide. I've um, been able to dial then into zero uh, with more experience. But when I was first starting, I used this uh, uh, quite a bit. And um, my scope and uh, dome roof have always been slave uh, per, uh, pretty much perfectly well. And in some spots they were off. And like I said, you'll get more experience with more time. That's basically the end of my presentation. Um, I'm just going to go over some uh, miscellaneous tools I would recommend you keep in the dome if you're planning to put this in a, a site that's far away, like a, a, a club. Um, like I have it, but uh, again, I would not recommend this dome for a super remote um, location. So you're gonna definitely wanna vacuum. I kept this little vacuum uh, here and it gets pretty dusty, at least in my location. Um, I, every time I go out, I kind of uh, vacuum everything up real quick. It takes about uh, 15 minutes or so and, and you're, you're good for you know a couple of days, I'll stay out there. I got a little duster here. I hang that. I, uh, every time I uncover my mount and scope, I give it a quick dust, and uh, it seems to, to um, stay uh, pretty much dust-free. I always have this tape here um, with me. I um, uh, can't tell you how many uh, extra rolls I've needed of this tape for uh, tacking down uh, the trip protectors when you're running your wires along the, the, the floor. Um, when you're changing the the scope, uh, like I said, I have a couple different scopes I shoot with, and and just troubleshooting and everything. Uh, definitely, this will come in handy. Uh, in your in my toolbox, I keep ratchet set, um, uh, this crescent wrenches, and these are all super cheap tools. By the way, you can see by the rust on this crescent wrench. But this big wrench you'll want for your your pier adjusting your pier, and then um, uh, definitely want to. Tape measure uh, uh, a straight and a flexible one. Uh, it's a good pair of scissors, uh, wire cutters, drill bits and drill bores, um, some uh, uh, Anderson power pole cramps and fuses and um, extra power poles, uh, voltometer, uh, micrometer, um, some tie downs, and last but not least, my probably my least favorite tool because uh, I'm usually having a bad day when I have to use these vice grips, but much needed in a pinch. Um, so that is basically the end of my presentation. And I uh, just want to thank you guys for uh, watching with me tonight. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank hey, you, Rory. Uh, I have a question or two. How do you do flats? You don't really have a flat wall to. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I do manual flats. Um, if you have a, a smaller refractor or a smaller scope, you may be able to get away with a, a, a mech, like a, a mechanical flat machine. But uh, I shoot it with shooting with the 11 inch. I have no room for that at all. It, it basically goes right up to the, the limits of uh, the, the dome roof. <laughs> So you shoot sky flats, or do you... yeah, yeah, I shoot sky flats. And you want to say what kind of software you use for your capture? That's kind of beyond the scope a little bit, but we're probably yeah. curious. Yeah. So they recommend this. It's called uh, Ascom device. That's what they recommend. I have since moved on to 
sequence generator pro there's a there's a way to shoot with sequence generator pro with an observatory um but when you're just getting started you'll probably want to use uh the uh, ascom device plugin um it'll be a lot easier than going straight into your uh regular uh imaging software most most likely What, it was Gordon. Gordon asked, uh, what's the most common thing to fail? Uh, and does that, it fail the same, what is it, does it fail the same time, every time? Sorry, one more, one more time for that question? So I guess the question is, what is the most common thing to fail? Where have you had the most problems? Uh, I would say getting off track like the actual the track like it um it it wasn't uh it would get off track or the the tooth the gear tooth wouldn't be cinched tight enough to the track itself and like i said i i had to take off a wheel it's just a weird design it's kind of you know I, it's it's it is what it is. It's you know it's a budget dome essentially what you're getting. It, you know you kind of make some adjustments. It works great, but I had to take a wheel off and like cinch it down, and you could see my gear tooth was hanging halfway off, and it still is, and and it, it works fine. But just figuring all that out was kind of a pain in the neck, but it works. Rory, yeah, uh, is is the separation of the cog and the ring? Is that a vertical up and down thing where where it goes up, it's up too high or too low, or is it not pushing into the the cog is not pushing into the ring far enough? Both. Both. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I said, the silicone lubricant under the the dome, uh, like that little ridge area that the wheels ride on, that'll give you it'll prevent it from gripping and that becomes a vertical issue when it rides up onto that ridge there and it it'll slip back with that silicone um so it, it seems to be mostly a vertical issue um i did have to make some adjustments i guess to the roundness of my dome when i first started and and play with that a little bit to to get it synced up excuse me, to get it synced up from a horizontal aspect, I, I guess I would say. I you, didn't, you didn't have a, um, a dew shield on your scope, so I imagine, that, and John asked the question, uh, what's the maximum size of a scope? Yeah. Um, a dew shield. So what? I guess what's the issue with the dew shield? Yeah, so for the Rasa I was shooting with, I had the... Astro Zap. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the one with the dew heaters, but I had to cut that down. I I just cut that down to exactly the height of my camera is flush with my camera coming out of the front of the Rasa, and it 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 worked. It it um it fits. You have like an inch of play until it hits the the wall. You know, so not much. Uh, by that, you mean that if it were an inch longer, it would be rubbing the inside of the dome. Exactly. Um, uh, somebody noted, uh, uh, Donald noted that uh, Nina works with Next Dome, and I believe there are other programs, uh, SGP and others. You just have to go in there and configure them, and they're really relatively simple. They, uh, the ASCOM is the answer to all that stuff. Um, yeah, and someone said that Indy works with uh, Next Dome. Yes, earlier th th there was a comment. Donald Walker says that there's an Indy or Indy driver. Uh, John at Astro wants to know if there. What's the max size for this scope again? I think you mentioned something about a refractor in there. What, what's the max size you can put in there? Yeah, uh, 152 millimeters is what I I gathered from the forums uh, for a refractor. So 100. 52 millimeters and this is just information i got from forums this that's focal focal length no it wouldn't be focal length it, no that like a um aperture for a refractor well wouldn't it depend more on the on the focal length or the length of the tube yeah yeah absolutely yeah 
Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it so it might be a one fifty two. It might be something else depending exactly, on, yeah. on what the F ratio is. So yeah. on, a, on a typical night, when you go out there and you get set up and you run, does it usually run the whole night? You come back, collect your data, or do you have to go out and intervene? It. <sighs> and how do you know if you do have to intervene if you're not this? Yeah, no, it does. It does good. It it. The dome does good. The dome's not my issue. It's always like, it seems to be like uh, other things go wrong. I'd never get through a whole night without some sort of problems. But uh, in a perfect situation, yeah, I don't, I've never had a problem with the dome so far. By that, you mean that the dome properly tracks and, and yeah. the scope yeah. is always pointed out through an empty yeah. dome or through an yes. empty shutter. Yeah. Okay. Gary Brown points out that it looks like the mount is, the motor is mounted too low. Couldn't you build yourself a bracket out there? Get some I, pieces of two by four, and I probably could. Yeah, um, but I think with the I don't know off the top of my head, but I think there not there may not be a way to do that as easily as it seems, considering you have to couple the the. Um, the bolt with the basically you have to there's two bolts that you couple together with a nut and that one of the bolts that you couple together comes from where the wheel is mounted and so it'd be hard to kind of adjust that i think it's a bad design but um yeah i guess i should say i'm not sure how that would be easily resolved uh, rory how wide is the aperture of the dome uh, the whole the hole uh i believe it's 14 inches are you, are you talking about the shutter yes yeah how wide is it i believe that's 14 inches and you run you ran an 11 inch with 11 inch C, well rasa um with a uh hyperstar on it no it's just, no, it's just a rasa yeah 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 it's a rasa so i didn't have it but uh a c14 with the hyperstar is uh too big gordon which Gordon Fox is saying, "I would, would, I would say a C14 with a hyperstar is too big. I, I think you could do a C14 though, but you, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. You may okay. be able to do a hyperstar, but if you, yeah, I was gonna say if you put a, um, a dew shield on there, that may not work. But uh, yeah, I." I don't have the answer for that. Sorry. Uh, you, I, have a have C, a I have a C. I have a C. I have a C. Fourteen and a six foot dome, so uh, peer pl peer placement is very critical, as so well as well as I'm sorry as well as exiting out the building because you have to exit out to make sure the dome itself is actually concentric. If you don't exit out, there's a slight eccentricity. Your gear mesh will vary as it runs around. So that's very important in the construction phase. Your gear, your gear will run close. It will then, it will then engage tighter. So it's very important that you do exit out when you build it. So, uh, Rory, somebody asked, how often do you have to fumigate for insects? Is that an issue? Sorry, one more time. How often do you have to fumigate for insects? And is that an issue? Uh, I've done it one time. I just I ran a perimeter. There's a lot of ants where I shoot at. Um, so I, I've done it one time, and and uh, that's all I've had to do so far. And uh, how about cooling down? Does it cool down relatively quickly, or how long? Yeah, does it, you open yeah, the I mean, shutter early. Uh, I'm shooting sometimes in a hundred and ten degree. <clears throat> You know in the daytime and it's not it's not too bad inside that uh, that dome um my equipment can cool down yeah you know, it's not like piping hot or anything by the time you're ready to image it well even in the day it's uh it's not piping hot uh you know i'm not worried about it and uh at night um you know it, it seems to cool down uh relatively quick so actually joe says um i made a bracket for my motor now the latest version comes with one from next down yeah good to hear i think they're getting better and better by the uh the month or, or by, by the design um also i wanted to give a shout out to ron richards at next dome we love our next dome observatories at facebook he runs a, a really good uh facebook group there 
Um, so um, a, a lot of good uh, group of guys that are give you you know a lot of good information if you're planning to get a next dome. Okay. So we've got, uh, I think we've got all the questions that were over there. Thank you, Rory, for coming on, telling us Thank about you your experience. Me. And I think you made it a lot easier for other people. I know that there are two um, next domes out at that facility, and both of them are, are used a lot. How long have you had yours in operation now? Uh, about a year. About a year? Okay. Yeah. So... Any other questions? Okay, I want to remind everybody that we have some fun things coming up for you and audience participation type things. One is um, Nebula, the beauty of dust. And the other is uh, you can gra grab a hold of some very, very good data from um, Eric. And you go over to the website and either go to TAIC Shots or TAIC Workshop and uh, you can get that stuff and um, get some ideas, send them in. We also remind you that uh, we could use more presenters. Um, Rory just, you know, just out of love of the channel and uh, wanted to do something for it. He says, you know, I'm going to put on a little show. He did a darn good job, too. So congratulations, Rory. We thank you for that. I think we've got everything. It's time to say good night. Jerry, this was Jerry's uh, second try at this, and um, we got some things to work out. We got to figure out where that noise was coming from. And uh, but thanks everybody for being here, st sticking with us through the noise. And uh, okay, that's it. Terry, you're in charge. Thank you guys. Okay. okay.